All right, so this is Kay's Speedster. It's not a 1930s design, but it's meant to look like one. Um, it's a two seat side by side. If you see Mystery Ship in it, if you see GB in it, uh, we've had some Kenner Sport Wing. It's accurate. It's whatever you want to see in the airplane. And that's the beauty of it is when you're building it, you can make it yours. So as you see, it's got uh, aluminum wings. Everything that we do is pre-cut on our CNC. It takes about a day and a half to skin a wing single person. It's got a heavy laminate aluminum spar, and we offer that pre-riveted if you want. It's got a steel tube fuselage, and the fuselage is pretty wide. It's deceivingly wide on the inside. It's 43 inches across. The turtle deck, it's got that dual hump turtle deck. And the dual hump is hiding inside a steel rollover uh, post, a structure. So if this thing rolls over, it keeps you safe. So the turtle deck is actually a huge safety uh, feature. The front tips up. That whole unit there comes up and that allows you easy access, um, easy exit and it allows you to do your maintenance on your electrical there. The side panels come off in about five minutes, so you have full access to the, to the rudder pedals. The whole front end comes off in about an hour, so when you do your condition inspection or annual on this, it's just really easy access to everything that you need. And of course, this unit here, the flip-up unit, is hinged at the front with two hinges, two pins. So if you ever decide that you want something else there, that's easy to replace. If you want two different styles of windscreen, that's easy to change out. It's about a 10 minute process to change that out. The baggage, um, again, it's hiding underneath the rollover structure inside the turtle deck. The baggage is pretty spacious. So the baggage limit on this one is 120 pounds. Um, on the kits, we're probably gonna bring that down to 100. Here's the rollover structure here to keep you safe in the event of a rollover. The wings take about 20 minutes to remove or to install. Um, the flaps are electrically driven. And of course, the fuel tanks are in the leading edge like many airplanes and we've got a total of 35 gallons of fuel. So for engine options, you're looking at what we have here is the Werner 9S, it's 160 horsepower. It'll also fit a Lycoming 320. Um, if you are into the higher horsepower road taxes, that's a potential option too, except for with the road taxes, it's a lightweight, so you're gonna end up having to put um, make sure that you're keeping weight out of the tail. Uh, overall, it's a very easy airplane to build. A um, little bit of fiberglass work uh, as far as cutting and trimming. You don't have to do any layups. A little bit of um, aluminum work. You know, you're going to be well-rounded by the time you do this airplane. And that's the fun part of it. It's not the same thing over and over and over. It's a little bit of everything. So this propeller is a ground adjustable. Uh, 76 inch and this engine takes a really big bite okay it's got a lot of torque there so we can actually with this engine spin up to I think they said about an 84 inch propeller but because of our ground clearance we're at 76 inches and that's why the ground adjustable is so important is we can change this pitch to where we're getting a big bite out of the air this airplane case speedster will accept anywhere between 150 to 180 horsepower. Um, 125 would be a little on the light end. I don't, you know, we want to see people at 150. And of course this Werner is 158, 160 horsepower. Um, in my opinion, anything above 160 is kind of excess. Right now we have our VNE set at 165 knots. And the reason for that is because someday somebody's gonna cram too much power into this thing. And uh, we wanted to make sure we have excess speed margin there in case somebody gets in over their heads. 
When you receive the kit, what you get, a bunch of CNC cut aluminum parts, uh, pre-welded fuselage frame, and the logical place to start, of course, is the wings, because you could get the wings built and get them hung up on a wall or out of the way. Although some people are gonna wanna start getting uh, controls, seat cushions, all that kind of stuff into their fuselage so they can sit in it and make airplane noises, and there's nothing wrong with that either. It's really just what matters most to you at that point. Where do you wanna start? And all these things are outlined in the manual. Um, in the drawings, there's no fixed way that you have to do things, although there is an easier order of priorities. Right now, build times are right around 1,200 hours. It is a faster to build airplane um, compared to, for instance, our STL. Our STL is about a 1,500 hour airplane. The STL has a lot of riveting if you don't buy the, the quick build kit. Um, and especially being that this is built with blind rivets, not bucked rivets, it goes really fast. Now the fuselage, it's stringers. You have to install stringers. Trim and install the turtle deck parts, the fiberglass pieces, and all that stuff goes really fast. So because you have the pre-built frame to work with, it's also easy. It's kind of a self-guiding process. Uh, there's nothing really tricky or, you know, it's not sit down and make all kinds of measurements and triple check them and then still mess up the part. It just kind of falls into place. All right, I'm gonna pop in here real quick to talk about our sponsors. As you know, I can't do this all on my own. We got to have somebody to help fuel that truck. We try really hard to work with uh, sponsors that provide a good service and a good quality product. So let's talk about those guys right now. Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, the premier provider of glass panel avionics systems for experimental and light sport aircraft. Wide Open Door Company at WideOpenDoorCo.com, your premier destination for high quality doors, including aircraft hangar doors. Warp Drive Propellers at WarpDriveInc.com, providing quality, solid carbon fiber propellers for many light sport and experimental aircraft. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for new videos and easy to navigate playlists and so much more. Speaking of fueling that truck, if you guys wanna join us on our Patreon page, become patrons of this channel, just search on Patreon for Experimental Aircraft Channel. Sign up at several different levels, so check that out. All right, so to get in and out of the airplane, it's, it's pretty easy. Typically, we leave this panel up, you know, in a hangar environment, but because we're at the show and it looks better with it down, we leave it down. Push up in the middle. The whole unit pops right up. I kind of had the Wendell Williams thing. Yeah, that's why they use or, you know, something like that. Yeah. By the time you're done building the thing, you're an acrobat and you get the, the, the process down just right. Um, first time's always tough because you don't know that process. So once you're in here, you'll see that you have adjustable pedals. Um, right now the pedals are all the way forward. Those do come back another four inches. We've got Matco brakes. Uh, it's worth pointing out that the pedals are adjustable independently, which means you can be six foot seven and have your five foot passenger next to you and you'll both be comfortable. So how you do your panel is entirely up to you. There's a lot of fun planning as far as that goes. Uh, right here, we have opted for the AV30 um, as our primary display, and that comes from UAvionics. And I gotta tell you, I love that instrument. It's got everything that you want and more. And of course, we like to go simpler as far as all the other stuff goes. We don't get crazy with glass panels or anything like that because, you know, we're appealing to the market that likes the vintage stuff. So, um, we like to keep it simple. So to close it, just pull that down. It's as simple as that. You got some latches here. And then of course this comes off for flight. Um, for the fuel system, it's pretty simple. It's simply just a, a valve right here in the middle of the airplane. Um, now you can actually put this anywhere that is logical, but right here seems the best because you have access. You can see it. 
We've got a left tank and right tank that are two different sizes and the reason is our spars overlap front to back. So we have 19 gallons in one side and we have 16 and a half gallons in the other side. And so um, they just feed from the tanks into the, into the valve and then to the engine. We've got dual electric fuel pumps for redundancy. Those fuel pumps are designed so that if one fails, the other can still pull fuel through the failed unit. Testing on the Speedster is going really well. Right now we're in the taxi testing phase and that's the dangerous part, that's the hard part. Everything happens at or near the ground. Um, it's not as short coupled as it looks. So we've got this large vertical back here. The airplane handles solid, it tracks straight, it doesn't show any tendency to want to do anything weird. It's predictable and most importantly it's confidence inspiring and that's important to know. Um, visibility, it's fine. It's some people like to sit high, some people like to sit low. Our pilot likes to sit high and he has no problem seeing over the front corner of the nose and that's huge on a, on a tail dragger. <laughs> so after Oshkosh, we're gonna resume our, our test flying and we're not expecting anything funky there. Uh, we have all our estimates set out for us. Um, at that point, it's about proving numbers and verifying that it handles predictably.